ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך עולם, אשר כדישן במצוותיו וציווה לנסות בדברי תורה. וערב נא אדוני אלוהינו את דברי תורתך בפינו ופי אמך בית ישראל. ונהיה אנחנו וצאצאנו וצאצא אמך בית ישראל. כולנו יודע שמכר ולומדי תורתך לשמה, ברוך אתה אדוני, למי תורה למו ישראל. אמן. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך עולם, אשר בך בנו מכל ימים ונתן לנו את תורתו, ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה. Amen. Amen. Guys? Okay, thanks. Um, all right, so we'll get, uh, we'll get to the show. Where's Michael? I'm not sure. Um, so let, let's just uh, get on with it. Yeah. All right. So now we are Rabbi Daniel Brody. We're doing the Mishnah Brura. Uh, again, uh, chapter 183, section 28 and 29. And what we're doing is we, it's about listening to the benching, you're saying it word for word. So obviously it would be ideal if the one leading the uh, Zimon would say the entire benching and all the other people listen. However, most of us today don't have a proper understanding of um, uh, the uh, Hebrew and we lack the proper concentration to lend, listen to the benching in full after another. And that's, uh, we should say it word for word because I think in the olden days what used to happen is they would just purely say Amen and it would suffice. In other words, uh, I don't know if uh, if you if one was leading a Muslim, it seems to be from here that one person would say it and the others would say Amen. But because our primary language is English, for example, or we would lack the correct sort of uh, concentration levels, we say it along with the person that's leading the Muslim. Because A, if we don't understand it, at least our articulation of it is a mitzvah in and of itself. And if we do understand Hebrew, our concentration levels are not as <coughs> high compared to when we're saying it as well. So it seems like that's how it used to be. Um, now, uh, it's, uh, that being said, one should try to rush to finish each brocha before he does. So as to say amen to his brocha. It's worth mentioning that if one has strong concentration when listening to another and he understands each word of Lashon Kodesh, he should listen to the whole first brocha from the leader and then continue. But this is quite rare. Who benches on a cup of wine? The one who leads the benching will bench on a cup of wine. He should be the kind of person who wants to bestow goodness upon others. This is based on the Pasuch. With one good eye, should one make a brocha? Um, so I think they're basically saying that whoever you get to make the zuman has to have the intention that he's blessing those that he's benching with, almost like a Cohen that does the blessing on behalf of the community. He's not just saying it for himself. So Kavona has two parts. Um, um, I'm, when I do the brocha for you, I'm having you all in mind, as well as myself, but all of you. And you need to have in mind, uh, obviously, yourselves when you're listening to me. So just remember, guys, just to say, like Arthur did quite diligently today, I'm made in the two places. And it's difficult because when you munching on Captain Crunch, sometimes the timing's a bit off. But uh, as long as you're hearing the brocha, that's the main thing. Uh, I see that people from Israel now are wearing long sleeves uh, shirts. I can see Arthur's uh, looking formal, Kevin's looking spiffy and formal, and they're both in winter or time, Gavin and I are on some, uh, summer wear. So I can see the seasonal change. All right, guys, we're going uh, we're gonna to continue. I'll tell you where we were. We were at uh, 21B1, and where we ended off was uh, very straightforwardly that um, as far as Rav was concerned, that um, he says you're not basically responsible uh, for paying uh, if your cows eat, uh, if somebody opens up their private store, the walling to make it accessible for the public, because you know you could say to the person that's not within your rights that you should bring your fruits near the public domain and make my cows liable for eating them. Uh, in, other, in other words, when you were enclosed, you had a certain amount of protection. Now you want to open it up and you're expecting me to be responsible. 
Shmuel is of a different opinion, as you know. He says that basically it's still the person's private property, even though he's opened it up. And he opened it up to the public where human beings can walk there. And it's separated from the main public domain. Um, and that basically um, it doesn't give the animal's owner uh, right to let his animal work where people should. Okay, so that's how we ended off. Now the Gemara is going to ask another question. It says, it returns to the question of the animal that eats in the public domain and who turns her head to the side to eat. So it says, shall we say that the issue of she turns her head is a tonight dispute? Okay. So it was taught in the Bryce that if an animal ate from the middle of the street, she pays what she has benefited. And uh, why does she pay with uh, what she has benefited? Uh, what does this mean, guys? Is she liable for shame or not? She's liable for, for Shane, but for, um, uh, uh, not for the, no, no, it's, it's, um, is it, she's liable for next meal. That's all. Okay. Not the, not the value of the, sorry, I can't give that wording, but she's liable for her next meal, which is like a, 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 a can of Epol or something like that. And that's it. She's limited to that. So if it's caviar, for 4,000 rand a kilogram, she's not liable for that. Correct. Correct. So exactly that. She's not liable for shame. Whenever you hear the term, she pays what she benefited, the owner pays what the animal benefited, it means there's no liability for shame. Because otherwise you pay what you consumed. Uh, so That's pay right. what you, you. Yeah, yeah. So it's the public domain. So in the middle of the street, um, uh, the animal's owner only pays what the animal uh, benefited, meaning you don't pay for shame uh, because you're not obligated in the public domain. Remember, uh, it was uh, Schmott chapter 22, verse 4. And um, if she ate from the side of the street, she pays what she damaged. These are the words of Rav Meir and Rav Yehuda. Now, one of the things I want to let you guys know is Shmuel and Rav are... Um, obviously Amorayim. And then when you deal with Tanaim, which are before them, you've got Rav Meir and Rav Yehuda. Okay. So what we're saying is that, uh, so the, the, there's the Tanakama. So the Tanakama is the first opinion here. And the first opinion consists of two rabbis, two Tanaim. And these are Rav Meir and Rav Yehuda. Now there's the second uh, group of Tanaim which is Rav Yossi and Rav Elaza. And they've got a different opinion. It says uh, the animal's way is not to eat, but to walk. Now, this, uh, this Bryce bears clarification because the view of Rav Yossi and the view of Rav Elaza is apparently the same as the Tanakama. So what it's saying here is it doesn't make 100% sense. What doesn't make sense is that, like, why bring two Tanoim almost seeming as though they're arguing with the first two Tanoim when the opinion is the same? So firstly, the first thing we need to clear is Rav Yossi and Rav Elaza is not saying what we think it's, the animal, it's not the animal's way to eat but to walk, meaning that the animal never eats when it's walking. What's the proof of this? Kev, when we look at the chapter in, in uh, Shmot, it says, and if he sends his animal forth and eats in the field of another. When we're saying this, the animal, as it's walking forth, is consuming. So therefore, if the animal was not consuming, uh, you wouldn't have this whole issue of shame in the public domain that it's exempt because it mentions in the field of another. So it is normal for an animal to walk and eat. So it obviously can't apply that uh, it's not the animal's uh, way to walk and eat. Rather, apparently we must say that the laws when she turns her uh, head to eat from the sides is the matter of dispute between them. So the Tanakama, which is Rav Meir and Rav Yehuda, holds that in the case where she turns her head to eat from the side of the street, her owner must pay what she benefited, whereas Rav Yossi holds that in such a case she pays what she has damaged. So this is what's proposed. 
So what it's saying is as follows, very, very straightforwardly, is that who says of the opinion, um, if, if you have a look at the opinion of Rav and Shmuel, who says if she turns her head, she pays what she benefited compared to uh, she pays what she eats? Does anybody know? So, I'm used to that. So Just yeah, try and remember. So, so Rav, uh, Rav says if you turn your head, uh, you pay what you benefited. And Shmuel says you pay what you damaged. No, the opposite way around. It's the other way around. Okay, I'm getting the opposite mixed up. way around. Okay, I'm getting mixed up. Yeah, because because what uh, what happened was we had a first, second, and third version of the Mishnah. So Shmuel's version in the first and second case was the animal only pays uh, what she has uh, damaged if she goes off the street altogether. Okay, off the street altogether in that particular case. And then in that particular case, um, it, it's uh, it's um, it's not turning and veering its head. Whereas Rav turned around and said, uh, first in the first version, if she turned her head, she pays what she has damaged, which was carrying tum, because it was unusual for the animal to turn its head and veer to the side of the street. Whereas Shmuel is talking about leaving the street altogether. So. Um, so it's just mimicking the, uh, the view of a tonight dispute. So basically, uh, Rav Yossi holds the same as uh, uh, Rav, is that um, when, when the owner, uh, uh, when the animal turns its head to eat from the side of the uh, uh, street, the owner must pay what she benefited, uh, meaning you don't pay for shame. Rav Maya and Rav Yehuda are saying that it's not unusual that um, that an animal turns its head to uh, to eat, and therefore it's still eating in the public domain at which you exempt for shame, and therefore you just pay the equivalent of the next meal. Rav Yossi holds that it is unusual, and you pay what uh, your your animal damaged. So the Gemara replies, uh, right, okay, so that's what was proposed. No. It might be that everybody, even the Tanoim and the Bryce, I hold that in regard to when she turns her head to eat from the side of the street, either as does Rav or does Shmuel. And here in this Bryce, it is regarded the interpretation of the Torah's words and it consumes in the field of another that they argue. Okay? So one master, the Tanakama, which is Rav Man, Rav Yehuda, holds that we interpret and it consumes in the field of another, but not in the public domain. Whereas the other master, um, which is Rav Yossi and Rav Elaza, holds that it consumes in the field of another as the first, but not in the domain of the damage of the owner of the cow. So let me just tell you what it's saying. It's saying here that, okay, so we can see that the Tanaic uh, view is mimicking to a certain extent the same view as Rav and Shmuel, is that it's repeating itself, is that the other line themselves um, uh, they either line themselves, uh, Rav and Shmuel, to the two Tanakabas uh, of Rav Yossi and Rav Elaza, or Rav Maya and Rav Yehuda. So it's the alignment here. So what are we talking about? We're saying maybe they all agree uh, in terms of the general opinion. Because remember the third version uh, of the Mishnah's interpretation is that Rav uh, and um, Shmuel agree that the animal pays what it has benefited. It only pays what it damaged if it gets off the street altogether. And then it says, well, what issue are we talking about? We're saying, okay, it's when somebody has a shop and they open it open to the public. So in other words, the shop had cladding and walling around and a small narrow area that you could go in, like a it and pick your wares and pay. And now that the, the guy's removed his side walls and roofing and has opened it up a shade awning so that he can display his wares for the public. So in the third version of the mission, it was saying, okay, so Rav and Shmuel agree in a general case, uh, but this is the case in which they argue. That's where we finished last time. So now it's saying that if we look at these particular Tanaim, this is the case where these Tanaim argue, which is not the same as Rav and Shmuel who are not Tanaim. 
they're saying, listen, how do we con how do we interpret and it consumes in the field of another? So what we're saying is as follows. Kev, are you with me? Kev, can you hear me? Okay, shame. Everybody seems a bit sleepy this morning, which I understand. Um, as long as you guys can hear me. All right. So what, what I was going to say is the, the, version, the version that we all understand from the Pasuk is as follows. Is it says, and uh, if he sends his animal forth and it consumes in the field of another. So that is in uh, Exodus chapter 22, verse 4. But it's saying, what is the converse of that? So the converse of that is that basically it means that you're not obligated in the public domain. Okay? So uh, the Tanakama, which is Rav Mayan Rav Yehuda, rules that if she eats from the middle of the street, she only pays what she benefited because you're not liable in the public domain for shame. Does that make sense? Now, yeah, you've uh, got another uh, issue. Saying that, um, whereas the other master holds, that if we interpret and it consumes in the field of another, but not in the domain of the damager, in other words, the owner of the cows. So what does this actually mean? It means... Um, you're talking about uh, the fact is that the owner is liable to pay. Okay. Um, in, other, in, in, other, in other words, I'm trying to see how to explain this separate, separately. If I say to you that the Pasuk says you call, uh, you're liable for damage in the field of another, what are you trying to exclude here? You're either excluding the public domain or you uh, bus, or you excluding the field of another meaning where my cows are. So if you come and bring your fruit, say you're coming for lunch and you've got a whole lot of, uh, you come in your car and you leave your car open and you've got fruits in your car and you've come to me for lunch on my farm and my animals start grazing in the back of your car. And you turn around to me and say, Damon, it was very nice having lunch but your animal grazed 2,000 rands worth of produce uh, from my car and you owe me money. I would turn around to you and say, well, what were you doing keeping food in a car on my premises? Does that make sense as a defense? In other words, if I've got cows there, in my, when it uses the field in the, in the field of another, it's asking, is the interpretation in the field uh, of another meaning, if I bring my cows to your fields to graze, or does it mean in the field of another, if you bring your fruit to my field uh, where my cows can eat it? That's what it's trying to interpret. Guys, have I lost you? Be honest. No, no, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, well, what am I trying to say, guys? Shame, have you guys done Khazor at all or not? If you haven't, just be, uh, just let I me know. I haven't done any because I don't have any of the pages. No, I only like the Scottish thing. Okay, so um, yeah. you just hang on, Kev. Kev. Just hang on, Earth. Kev. That's fine. All right, let me repeat it. Let me explain it in a simpler way then. All right. So this is the case. If I say, and it consumes in the field of another, yeah. what does this mean? It implies that it means either, according to the Tanakama, that it means to exclude liability in the public domain, okay. or it means to exclude liability in my field where my cows are. If I bring my cow to your field to graze, I'm responsible because it's in the field of another. It's not my field where I bring my cows to graze. Okay, uh, and in the field of another is not the public domain. That's fine. But when you bring your cow, uh, when you bring your food to my field, because you came over for lunch and you had a car full of goods, and by the time you leave for lunch after a few drinks, there's nothing left of the food in your vehicle. Uh, does that constitute the field of another? Does it constitute the field of another when you're coming to my field? Does that make sense? No. So that's, yep. where, that's where the interpretation lies. Damage in other words, I'm saying to you, okay, 
So if I say to you, uh, I'm obligated in the field of another for the damage that I've caused. If my cow comes into Arthur's field and eats, I'm obligated to pay for what my cow consumed in Arthur's field. Okay. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. Which by inference means uh, the public domain is not the field of another, which means if I consume, if Arthur's got his fruit and vegetables in the public domain, uh, then I'm not responsible for paying because Arthur's fruit and vegetables are exposed where many animals uh, have access to it. And okay. therefore, Arthur, as the store owner, can't expect if he opens up his store or has it in the public area in the middle of the road to obligate uh, people who own the animals there because it's a dangerous area where many animals are likely going to consume Arthur's food. Okay. So in that case, there's no liability for Shane. But if you interpret the verse slightly differently, and it says in the field of another, okay. to include um, perhaps, um, but to include Arthur's field. In other words, if I bring my cows uh, there and graze, I pay for Arthur. And to exclude when Arthur comes to my field, in other words, if Arthur comes over for lunch and brings a whole lot of fruit and vegetables, and um, by bringing a whole lot of fruit and vegetables, my cows have a field day while he comes for a bra, yeah. and he said, but you've emptied my whole uh, bucky of stuff. Uh, in that case, you could interpret a liability as either being in the field of another, because Arthur's in my field, which mm -hmm. means I'm liable, or it means I'm not liable because the field of another, I could turn around to Arthur and say, well, Arthur, what were you doing when you came to me not to drop off your stuff first? You've come to me where my animals are. What did you think my animals were going to do when you have a whole lot of fantastic fruit and vegetables with your car open? So if you hold that the interpretation of the verse excludes the public domain, then you don't obligate for Shane in the public domain. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so according to the Tanakama Rav May and Rav Yehuda, it says in the field of another means to exclude the public domain. And that's why in the middle of the street, you don't pay for shine and you only pay for what the animal benefited. It's proposing here that Rav Yosin Rav Elaza is, is saying um, that basically the owner is liable to pay in the public domain uh because um it's it's technically considered uh not excluded because the exclusion is in the field of another the, does that do, i mean the obligation is in the field of another so it could be interpreted is in the field of another either your field or my field does that make does that make sense so we're trying to see what the the ruling is Sorry, Kev. In the field of another, we try to interpret what does it mean? Does it mean if I take my cows to your field or does it include when you bring your produce to my field? So all at once is uh, um, uh, we, we want to interpret and it consumes in the field of another but not in the public domain. So that's the Tanakama. The other master holds, and when we say the other master, we say Rav Yosin Rav Eliezer, says, and it consumes in the field of the another, but not in the domain of the damager, the owner of the cow. So what it's saying is, it doesn't seem to, uh, it seems to say that they interpret it, that it means that if Arthur comes to me for lunch with his produce, it comes to exclude that Arthur owes me, um, uh, it comes to uh, Arthur, uh, Arthur asked me to pay him when my cows ate fruit and vegetables, when he comes over to me with a bucket full of food uh, onto my property, and it comes to exclude uh, me paying him for damages. Does that make sense? Yep. 
So in other, in other words, uh, Kev, there's two possible interpretations. If I say the field of another, it means as follows. It means, firstly, if I, if, if I, I send my animal forth in, uh, in Gavin's field, okay, or in your field, it means in that case to Grace that I owe you money because what is my animal doing in your field? And by inference, it means that the, in the field of another is not the public domain which means it comes to exclude liability in the public domain. The other way you can interpret it is as follows, is that um, um, if I take my cow to Arthur's field uh, to graze, I'm responsible, but if Arthur brings his fruit and vegetables mm -hmm. into my field, uh, I'm not responsible because what is he doing bringing his produce into my field? So they want to know, is the exclusion of liability in the public domain or is it when Arthur brings his fruit and vegetables uh, into my field because I, he's brought the hazard into my field and I could turn around and say what is he doing bringing in his fruit and vegetables into my field and making me obligated that's all it's saying so in other words the Torah means to exclude from liability only the cases uh, of one who brings his fruits into the premises of the animal's owner without permission. And the animal eats those fruits, okay? Um, but if the fruits are in the public domain and the animal eats them, its, li it's owner is liable to pay. That, that's the inference. Does that make sense? Yeah? Yeah, the whole argument is as follows. Like the case is clear that if my cow goes into your uh, field, Kevin, and starts grazing, I owe you for the money. There's no doubt. Yeah. Because I'm not, I have no business being in your field. But um, therefore, it excludes the public domain where there is a lot of, that's according to the Tanakama, there are a lot of animals. So for you to bring your fruit and vegetables into the public domain, it's obviously going to be uh, consumed and therefore you can't hold the public responsible. That's the one interpretation. The other interpretation is uh, very simply that uh, in, the, in the field of another comes to uh, only include if I bring my cow into Kevin's field to eat. But if Arthur brings his produce into the field of another, meaning me, what is he doing bringing his food onto my premises with my hungry animals? Meaning, uh, is it coming to exclude liability uh, in the public domain, or is it coming to exclude liability if Arthur is bringing his fruit and vegetables into my domain? Does that make sense? It's the equivalent of, uh, yeah? Yeah, sure. Well, in the field of another, they, they want to know what you exclude. So in the field of another, it's clear that if I bring my animal to eat in your field, I'm liable. What it's saying here is then when does it come to exclude liability? Uh, does it come to exclude liability uh, in a case where it's the public domain with a lot of animals that could be eating uh, Arthur's potential fruit and vegetables where owner, Arthur can't hold the public responsible because he's bringing his fruit and vegetables in a dangerous area where there's a lot of hungry animals or is it coming to exclude liability in the field of another where Arthur comes with a bucky that's open into my field for me for lunch and then complains afterwards that my animals have eaten his fruit and vegetables when he's coming to me. So it's the equivalent of Arthur having a chihuahua that escapes on my property and gets eaten by my Rottweiler. And he wants recompensation because I'm saying, what is your chihuahua doing on my property? 
So the thing of it is that liability, we want to say, if you're holding that the liability uh, exclusion is in the public domain, then the first time I come, uh, exempts for chain payment in the public domain. And that's why it says that the animal pays what it's benefited. If you're holding according to the second opinion, like Rav Yossi and Rav Eliezer, which, uh, which obviously allows for exemption of liability in the field of another, meaning Arthur came to me, my field, brought all his fruit and vegetables and complained when my animals ate it, it doesn't provide exemption in the public domain and therefore obligates for shame payment. Do you get what I'm saying? So we say maybe this is what the argument is, is about. And what it does do in, uh, is it says the Gomorrah questions the possibility of interpreting a verse in the last way. Can the verse mean to exclude from liability the case in which he eats in the domain of the damager himself? And then the owner can say, well, what is your fruit doing in my domain? So the Gomorrah concedes that therefore proposes another way of understanding the dispute so that we need not say that they argue about the case when she turns her head. Rather, we can say that the law of Ilfa and Rav Oshaya is the point of dispute between them. Meaning, the Tanakama, Rav May and Rav Yehuda, who state that if she eats from the middle of the street, she pays only what she benefited, is regardless of the circumstances. Um, so what I'm saying is that the, it doesn't matter if the animal acts unusually. If the animal acts unusually and jumps on another animal, eats in its backpack, etc., it's not a case then of carrying or shame. In other words, if it eats in the backpack of another or a case of carrying because it jumped on the other animal or acted unusually to get into food. Uh, there's no payment whatsoever. It's purely a case of paying uh, nothing for shame and only paying for the equivalent of the animal's next meal, like the e-poll, et cetera. So that's what it's uh, coming to say. And that was the discussion with Il, uh, uh, Rav Ilfa and Rav Oshaya. So it was saying that it's not a way to eat, eat and walk. So basically, um, uh, the discussion is... Um, that that they, that they were saying because it's not a way for an animal to eat and walk uh, some of the opinions in the Gomorrah say that when an animal jumps on another animal's backpack to get food etc it's carrying it because it's unusual or if it's eating in the private backpack of another and it's not jumping up that's considered chain because it's like somebody uh, going in your own car from a public street to uh, get at the food. So they're saying this is the argument, basically. But all can agree two things, that in the public domain, you exempt, uh, if you bring uh, fruit and vegetables or meat uh, and other animals consume them because there are a lot of animals that are gonna be there, so you can't hold the public responsible. And if Arthur came to me for lunch with a open bucky full of goodies and my animals ate it, Arthur can't hold me responsible. So whether it's the public domain or my field, the only time that I can be held responsible is if I release my animal into Arthur's field to eat. That's where the uh, Pasuk says I'm full, liable for food damages and shame. Does that make sense? Okay. So in other words, Rav May and Rav Yehuda state that uh, if the animal ate from the middle of the street, uh, she pays what she is benefited. So they're saying in that particular case, it means regardless of circumstances, meaning it doesn't matter if she did something unusual, or if she jumped on another animal, there is no obligation of shame. There's only paying uh, what she benefited. But in Ilfa's case, um, uh, so that's according to Ilfa. But Rav Ashaya's case, where the animal jumped up and ate from the basket of somebody was carrying, um, we, we, there, there's obligation to pay uh, for unusual damage. Does that make sense? So there's two different opinions, as usual. All right, guys, I want to thank you for a good day. I hope it makes a little bit of sense.
Yeah, right. no, well, no, well done. It's clear. Thank you. All right. It's kind of going in circles, but it's trying to get clarity, I guess. All right, guys, I hope you have a good day. Thanks for joining. Huh? Yeah, likewise. Thanks for, thanks for your efforts. Pleasure, man. Cheers. Cheers, guys.